Among them was Detective Superintendent Ian Phoenix. His widow Susan has chronicled their life together, an extraordinary one based both on love and lies. Uh, it's a funny thing to say, but I suppose we almost enjoyed the excitement of living on the edge, if you like. It doesn't sound too grandiose. Um, we did take much more care, um, but it, was, it became such a subconscious thing. I had to think about it very carefully myself uh, afterwards, what we did do, watching that cars weren't following you home from wherever. And if you thought a car had been behind you too long, you went past your house, double back, and then went home. Um, didn't give out telephone numbers when people rang just answered with the name, which, uh, without the name, sorry, uh, which made you sound a little rude at times, perhaps. Uh, it was just a hello until you checked who they were. It made us very cautious, I, I suppose, looking back at the time, one didn't realise because you just got on with life and adapted, but it made us quite cautious about our own personal security, about uh, not letting other people know what he did unless they were very good friends, making sure the children did... Uh, protected themselves, didn't tell friends about their father, just looking at everyday things like checking your car for undercar booby traps, um, not hanging things on the line that would give you away that uh, you had a uniform in the house or whatever. Did that knowledge that you shared, those secrets, did it make you closer? Possibly. Uh, we had a very good relationship. Um, we were as much in love when Ian died as we would have been in the, in the early days. Um, Perhaps it enhanced it because we turned to each other for our comfort and we did share everything, including a very black humour that kept us through and has helped me survive ever since. Well, that's all right for you, but what about the two children? Yes, it was uh, an odd area of morality to tell your children that one doesn't tell lies, but one might have to bend the truth a little bit for daddy's protection. I don't consciously, again, remember having to say to them now, we don't say this or we say that, but I know that... Uh, in some way we managed to encourage them to not either not mention daddy's job or I think quite a lot of their little friends thought he was a bus driver or a postman which is a little sad because the children cannot be proud of the actual job that their father does and uh, they have to learn to be proud within themselves for his job towards the community but also to cope with friends not knowing. Was he a bit of a maverick character? I suppose it was, really. I, I think you'd have been quite shocked at hearing that uh, term. He was quite a modest man, but yeah, he was an exciting person that felt when things needed to be said, they should be said, and yeah, he was a maverick. What would he wish to be remembered about his life? It's very difficult. Even during the writing of the book, uh, it has worried me a lot as to just exactly which things he needed uh, underlined and not. He felt that the government uh, needed to look more seriously at terrorist groups on a worldwide basis and he felt that uh, terrorists should be treated uh, more severely. Uh, he wanted the criminal element uh, within society, sometimes masquerading as terrorists, to be uh, removed. You wrote this book with Jack Holland. Now, what did Jack think that Ian did? Jack, for some reason or other, uh, <laughs> thought that Ian was a hearing aid salesman. But when he thought about it, he didn't ever have a title in his head for Ian, um, because when we met Jack and Mary, we were renting their house in Italy, and Ian was quite shocked to see Jack's library, which was full of uh, uh, books written from a nationalist Republican stance, and uh, no more extreme a person could have been introduced to an IUC man uh, than Jack and Mary at that time. Now, you cooperated with Jack, a nationalist sympathiser, in the writing of the book. What would Ian think of that? He would have thought it was a good idea. Ian likes stirring people up and keeping them on their toes and making them wonder. And we did discuss it at the time. He often said, if I could only tell Jack Holland what I did, by golly, we could write some book together. It's called Phoenix, published by Hodder and Stoughton, written by Jack Holland and Susan Phoenix. Dr. Phoenix, thank you much. Thank you. After the break, the Australian author Kathy Lett on her new pun and fun filled mad cows, and James Brown, editor of England's fastest growing magazine, Loaded. <laughs>